This video was made in partnership with Loom Network, the next generation blockchain application platform for Ethereum. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make lightning fast layer 2 token payments on Loom's Plasma chain. Before we continue, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure to click that notification bell so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's get started. In the rest of this video, we will cover implementing the functionality behind the dashboard you see on the screen right now. We will cover depositing an ERC20 token to a Loom sidechain, in this case EXT Dev, using those newly deposited tokens to make payments without gas. Then finally, we will take the leftover tokens and withdraw them back to Ethereum, in this case the RinkB network. We will be using pre-deployed smart contracts. The instructions for doing so are covered in my previous Loom video on transfer gateways. Also, the Funk token contract is covered in my last video on Ethers.js. Let's jump into the code. The dashboard is built using Nuxt and Vue.js. I won't cover how to use Nuxt or Vue.js in this video, but I will go over some of the template and how the UI is laid out. You can actually use any JavaScript framework you like to build this kind of dashboard, and most of the implementation would be pretty similar. The source code will be linked in the description below so you can get a better idea if you want to investigate further. In this example, all of the important code is located in index.view under the pages directory. At the top, we have a template tag with some HTML markup to describe the UI. Here we have two cards showing two wallet addresses, one on Rinkaby and one on the Loom sidechain. Also, we display their balances. Below that, we have a simple button to make a payment. We also have a few more buttons, one to retrieve new tokens from the faucet function in our funk token contract, a deposit button, and a withdrawal button. Let's move on to the meat and potatoes. So first, let's start by importing a bunch of libraries to include Web3, some objects from Loom.js, Ethers, Big Number, and Truncate. Next, we'll define a handful of constants to hold wallet addresses and contract addresses that we already know. In Vue.js, we have to export a default object. Next, we define a bunch of local variables that we can access from within the rest of the object by creating a data function that returns an object with all of the different properties that we want to access. Next, we create a mounted function that is called as soon as all of the HTML is rendered on the browser. Then we call a bunch of methods that we'll define below in steps. Next, let's define these methods. So in our init web3 method is some fairly boilerplate code looking for a web3 provider such as MetaMask and then alerting the user if no such provider is available. If everything works out, we'll go ahead and assign this new web3 provider to one of our local variables we defined above. Then we'll grab some information about the wallet attached to this provider and its wallet address. Next, we'll initialize our connection to the Loom sidechain. First, we'll create a new client object with the addresses here, and then save that client to one of our local variables so we can use it later. This next step is how we will get our private key for use on the Loom sidechain. First, we will check to see if a key exists in local storage. If it does exist, we'll set it to a variable called private key. If not, we'll generate a brand new key, and then we'll set that new key just local storage. This is a quick and dirty way to allow users to interact with the Loom sidechain without having to worry about private and public keys. In production, however, you'll want to give the user a way to recover this key just in case their local storage gets wiped out. For example, you could generate a 12 word recovery phrase and then they could write that down and use that every time they want to log into your application. Once we have our private key, we'll generate a public key from that and then get the address from that and save it to a local variable. Next, we'll add some required middleware for working with Ethereum transactions on Loom sidechains. We'll create an instance of Loom provider using our client and private key. We'll wrap that in Web3 and then create a Web3 provider using Ethers.js so we can work with it later. And we'll save that to one of our local variables. Next, we want to map our RinkB wallet address to our new Loom address so that the gateway knows how to transfer ERC20 tokens back and forth. Again, if this concept is unfamiliar to you, please check out my previous Loom video on transfer gateways. First, we'll use some helper functions included in the Loom.js library to create some address objects. 
Then we'll also use the Loom.js library to create a address mapper object. We'll start by checking to see if a mapping already exists. If we already have a mapping, and it's not the current address we're using in MetaMask, we will prompt the user to switch to the account that has that mapping. If no current mapping exists, we'll prompt the user to sign a message to be sent to the Loom transfer gateway, and that mapping will be added. We use the this.ready variable to hide the rest of the dashboard until we have a valid mapping between addresses. This is a way to keep users from messing around with a dashboard when they're not even able to interact with both networks. Next, we want to initialize our smart contracts so we can interact with them. And because we're using Ethers.js, we can use the super awesome human readable ABIs to describe our contracts. So first, we will add the one for both of our tokens. Next, we add one for the gateway and finally one for a very small smart contract that I deployed called pay. And it only has a single function called pay. And internally in this function, it uses the approved transfer from pattern common for ERC20 to tokens to facilitate payments. And this will be used on the Loom sidechain to make a payment later on. Next, we will instantiate our smart contracts using Ethers.js and our predefined addresses and ABIs we just defined. Next, we'll add some event listeners. First, we'll listen to transfer events to and from our wallet address on the Rinkeby network. Then we'll do the same for our wallet address on the Loom sidechain. These will update our UI whenever tokens are transferred back and forth between wallets. Keep in mind that as of this recording, the event listeners don't always seem to work and it may depend on the network or your internet connection, but you may have to refresh your browser in order for balances to update correctly. Next, we'll create a method to update the balances in our UI. And this is simply done by making a call to the balance of method on our smart contracts on both Rinkeby and Loom, and then saving those balances to our local variables, which will reflect in our UI. Next, we will create a deposit method and the first thing we'll do is set the local variable busy to true. This will disable all of our buttons on the UI so the user can't go click happy. Once we have our token amount, we will call the approve method on our token contract and then call the deposit ERC20 method on the Loom transfer gateway contract. This will allow the gateway to take those tokens and then transfer them onto the Loom sidechain. We wait for those to complete using async await. And once those are complete, we will set busy to false so the user can click buttons again. Next, let's implement the withdraw method, which will allow users to take tokens from the Loom network back to the Rinkeby network. Again, we set busy to true. First thing we need to do is listen for a single event. This event will emit a signature that we will need to transmit over on the Rinkeby network in order to complete the withdrawal process. We only want to listen to events that have to do with our ERC20 token and the Rinkeby wallet address that we own. Once we've received this event on Rinkeby, we can call the withdraw ERC20 method on the gateway contract and then send the signature that was transmitted in the event. Again, once it's completed, we can set busy to false and the user can click buttons again. Once we have that event listener set up, we can go ahead and get our token amount that we want to withdraw. Again, use the approve transfer from pattern, call the withdraw ERC20 async function on the Loom gateway to initiate the withdrawal process. Next, let's implement the method to make a payment, set busy to true, get our token amount. Using the approve and transfer from pattern, we call the pay method on the pay contract, which will take 10 tokens as a payment. Finally, we'll set busy to false. This final method is simply a utility method. It calls the faucet function on our rink BERC20 contract. And this allows us to just fill our wallet with funk tokens whenever we need it. And if you don't understand where this method comes from, check out my previous video on Ethers.js where I deployed an ERC20 contract with this extra faucet method. 
Now let's see it all in action. So we'll start by loading up our wallet with some Funk tokens. We can see that the faucet has loaded us up with 100 tokens. Now we can deposit those to the Loom sidechain. This will take two steps, one to approve, and the second to initiate the transfer on the Loom transfer gateway smart contract. When everything is finished, we should see 50 tokens on Rinkaby and 50 tokens on Loom. Next, we can make a payment by clicking pay now. And notice we don't get any sort of pop-up and we're not prompted to spend any sort of gas. The payment transaction happens very quickly and seamlessly for the user. This would work perfect for something like an in-app or in-game purchase where the user doesn't need to be bothered by MetaMask windows and prompts to sign messages. Finally, we can withdraw our remaining 40 tokens back to the Rinkby network. Once the process is completed on the Loom side, we are prompted by MetaMask to send the signature we received from the event we listened for, and that would complete the transaction on Rinkby. And now you can see we have 90 total tokens back on Rinkaby. And that's it. That's how easy it is to make lightning fast gasless payments on the Loom network. Again, if you had problems following the code in this video, the source code is linked in the description below so you can have a closer look at that if you so desire. If you enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.